I'm a whore. I got ill when I was 11. I jumped off the couch, which kind of freak accident and ended up developing CRPS, which then led to developing chronic fatigue syndrome and ME, and then seizures and, and other symptoms around that. And through those experiences, I ended up finding art and photography, which has kind of led me up to this point. I've led a very untraditional life of a teenager, I guess, and not been in school very much and not had the same learning experiences as, as my peers. But art is something that I've always held on to and it's something that I think has brought me to where I am now. Living a very different life, but one that I kind of feel is my own for the first time in a, in a long time. And replacing the narrative of my ill health with my art. I did it as an option for GCSE. I was originally going to be doing it in school with everyone else, but my health declined and so I ended up sort of doing everything at home. And I was in touch with my photography teacher, but for the most part I did it I did it on my own. I did it from learning on the internet and slowly sort of started to move through learning how to use the camera and learning skills. Eventually leading up to doing some self-portraits because I was the only person that I could use as, as a model. And then I discovered conceptual photography, which is sort of bringing in fantastical ideas and, and stitching images together to create surreal portraits and began to experiment with that. And it was a lot of learning, a lot of messing up, uh, a lot of experimenting but it was really fun to be able to explore those ideas and I've always enjoyed writing so it was fun to explore those words visually in a way that, that other people could start to see into my story. It's funny because my ideas come to me in, in so many different ways and sometimes in the middle of a really hard moment a visual kind of comes to me. I, I've always seen things like that, I've always been very visual and loved art and, and concepts. So sometimes in sort of my darkest moments, the thing that will keep me going is the idea that will spark. And then I will be able to move forward into making that a reality. So a lot of times my photos are almost lessons of things that I've learned in really hard moments. And it's, it's definitely therapeutic for me to explore feelings that you can't, you can't put into words, you can't conceptualise in, in that way. To be able to explore them visually is a way for me to, um, to understand them better and to understand myself better. I think sometimes the images come out and I, they come out in a way that I didn't realise I was feeling that. I didn't realise that was what was the issue or the thing that I was struggling with. But I see the image at the end and realise sort of how all the pieces fit together, I guess. I've started to get back into writing as I explored more with, with photography because I kind of left it behind for a period of time. It was more difficult and challenging for me to, to write and to, to think about that sort of stuff with fatigue. But they just marry together really well and I sometimes think it's helpful to have both, um, especially for other people, being able to understand where I'm coming from and the meaning behind things. Sometimes they connect in ways I didn't intend them to. I find poems that I wrote randomly on my phone months ago that suddenly relate to the time that I'm in so well. And I think help my story be kind of more understandable to other people. One poem that I wrote which kind of resonated with me uh, quite a lot was my Warriors poem. It's sort of one of the ones that I feel like really reflects me and how I feel about kind of other people going through similar, similar things. Stay soft, my warriors, for there is beauty in it. Be fierce for the things you love and kinder for the hurt you've bared. It, it's about keeping the, the softness and keeping myself in all of this, so I'm not losing it to the fight and to, to constantly, you know, moving forward. And to be brave and to be fierce for the things that I love, but also be gentle with, 
the things that I've been through as well and to not lose that in, in this world, which I think can be difficult sometimes. It's, it's hard to remain soft to things. I slowly climb up the branches, leaves brushing my bare arms and the sun glistening through clouds. The soft tones of musical melodies drift up to where I sit atop my life. I want more than this, more than this tiny four-walled room that encapsulates my spirit. My soul yearns for the sky, for my tears to fall as far as raindrops, to soar as high as the clouds, making shapes I barely remember. I sit on a wobbly branch, just as seemingly weak as my own two legs, yet still they hold. Even the smallest stem, the tiniest branch can one day grow a flower, and the flowers cannot grow without rain. So I let my tears fall, making a map of memories for me to follow. I wrote it when I was feeling low and I was feeling very trapped. I sort of easily get get very bogged down by the fact that I, I can't go out and do all these things and I have all these ideas and I, I just really love living life. I really love being outside. I love seeing people and being involved in things and it's very hard to be so trapped sometimes. But I think it's it's remembering what I've what I've been through and remembering what I have, and those experiences have, have changed me. I, I wouldn't have this appreciation for the smallest things if this hadn't happened, and that things start slow and they start small, but the, they grow and it takes a long time and it's it's really hard. But I know, kind of in myself, that that things will get better and things will move forward. It's just learning to be patient, I think, and learning to be okay with sitting in the darkness and waiting for that, that light to grow because it, it takes time, um, but it, it, it's worth it. And I think my journey and any hardships that I've had can help me further on in, in my life as well. Some of my sort of key pieces that I look at more recently have been done in actually in my bed and I think those again are quite poetic because I do have images where I'm outside and I'm sort of in these fantastical worlds but there are times where I'm actually in bed and there's still magic there even though I've seen it as a prison for so long it's been able to see it as another key to opening more doors and it's, it's different, it's, it's not what everybody has, it's, it's a perspective that can be very limiting, but it's almost become part of me now and I feel like using my bed as, as uh, in my imagery is quite a key factor to who I am and my story and it's important to include that because it can be a magical thing, it's where I dream, it's where I rest, it's where most of my ideas come to me, it's, it's where I've had a lot of pain and a lot of hardship but it's almost the only thing that really encompasses kind of me and how messy life has been because it's been a constant for so long. Even setting up a shot like that is, is a lot of energy for me to kind of clear the space and set up the tripod and set up the camera. Um, but I, I just sort of had this idea and this spark and I ran downstairs to the gap, well, I ran. <laughs> I say, I say this, but I did not run because I would have fallen down the stairs. I went to the garage to, to grab some stuff in that we had, sort of just there, and just use what I had around me to, to create these clouds around my bed to sort of describe the feeling of, of being tired and, and being sort of in bed and that, that hardship, but also the magical inspiration that comes from that. and the fact that some of my hardest moments have born have birthed some of my kind of best images and best work which i think that that kind of image reflects quite well is that it's quite a dreamy image in the tones and colors but it's also a sad image in in so many ways because i'm there kind of not even being able to lift my head up i'm sort of resting on my ideas almost i'm resting on that creativity i'm resting on those those bits of inspiration. So it's, it's kind of a mixed, like the poem, it's quite a mixed image, I guess, with ideas. 
probably another one that again it's it's quite similar because it's it's with a bed is this one that I did which I based on the princess and the pea story because uh, I, I love sort of fairy tales and folk tales uh, but I called it the princess and her pain that story actually reflects quite well a part of mine uh, because when I had CRPS which is a, a nerve pain condition I couldn't have anything touching sort of my foot which was the area that was affected and I was in an extreme amount of pain and in that sense it mirrors that story and that even under all those blankets you could feel that pain and I could feel the pain in such an incredible way that it overtook my life at so young. That's a part of my story that although it was a while ago it, it still affects me now. There's a lot of parts of my story that are hard to look back on and hard to think about and a way for me of, of reframing it is through my imagery of owning my own story in a way that's me, in a way that is hope, in a way that is my, it's my story and I get to choose how I see it and how I kind of create that narrative, how I show other people what I've been through and I think it helps with some of the more difficult memories is that I have a way of of looking at them and seeing what happened and, and knowing that it happened but also being able to write write my own version write my own story and make my own narrative for me so we're at lost and found which is my studio art space that i'm sharing with another artist julian gamble I was just looking for a place to work outside of home to be able to have a bit more independence and freedom but something that, that fit with me and what I could manage and do realistically. And we're hoping to make it a storytelling studio space to encourage young people and people of marginalised groups to have a place to come to, to learn about storytelling, to tell their own stories, to do art as well as it being a sort of promotion place for me and Gillian as independent artists as well. So I've always had a collection of random props and different things that I've had from photos and even sort of family gifts from my grandparents, sort of old heirlooms and things. I've always loved fairy tales and that has always been a major inspiration in my visual work. So I just started to jot down ideas of, of objects that I had and where I could say that they had come from. And it sort of, again, it just snowballed and I was thinking of all these different ideas, thinking of linking to specific places in the town as well. And just this idea of lost objects coming to a place to be found was very poetic for me and for this space. So it was, it was really lovely to, to kind of bring in a space that was full of all these lost objects but everyone has their own story attached to them. Everybody knows the stories but each person has a different experience of reading them or understanding them. There's so many versions nowadays of fairy tales and it's nice to, to kind of call the lost things home again. I think Hawk, it's a gentle nudge into the future. It's it's a way of of seeing possibility, and it's a way of knowing that that things are you you can't choose what happened, you can't know what happens, but you can hope for for being the best version of you and to move forward. And no one can take that away from you. No one can take hope away from from me. And no matter what happens, and no matter kind of what is going to happen, just having hope in yourself and knowing you and, and having trust in you is, is one of the most important things I think I've, I've learned is that I've always got me, I've always got hope and I get to choose my own story still through that.